Here we are. Hello, cheapskaters. Welcome to my kitchen this coolish Thursday night. It's um, seven degrees here at the moment. So toasty warm inside, but a bit brisk outside. I hope it's hope you're cozy and warm where you are and comfortable. Um, while we make pastrami, I have to tell you, pastrami is my favourite deli meat. Absolutely love it. Very, very rarely ever bought it because it was so expensive and it is still expensive unless you make it yourself. Learn how to moo it and that always makes me giggle because we're mooing pastrami, which is actually corned beef, so it's sort of fitting, isn't it, that it's called moo. Anywho, I just, you know, I buy two or three slices a couple of times a year and I just, um, and my favourite way to eat it was on fresh bread with um, tomato and pickle. Yum. It was really, really good like that. Anyway, pastrami is still expensive to buy. It varies between depending on whether you buy it from the supermarket deli counter or from a, a real deli. Or a delicatessen, it varies from anything from between $24 to $35 a kilo. Ouch. For good old peppered corned beef, because that's really all pastrami is, is peppered corned beef. It's nothing um, nothing fancy, nothing, nothing like it's not fillet or anything. It, it's just good old fashioned peppered corned beef. It's just done a little differently. So I'll show you how to do it. Now, you won't see the completed product tonight because it actually takes five or six days to make pastrami. Really, it does. But okay. I'll get you started and I'll walk you through the steps because it is so simple that once you realise how easy it is, you'll never buy it again. And trust me when I say homemade is so much nicer. The time is actually in the brining. Now, I have corned beef here, just from the butcher. That's good old ordinary, excuse my tea towel because it's all chopped up. Um, corned beef. Now, when you buy corned beef from the butcher like this, it has actually already been brined or pickled or corned which is another word for pickling. So technically you don't need to do the brining step. If you want really, really good pastrami, do the brining step. Don't skip it at all. It is well worth it. Now, this is actually two pieces of corned beef, so about four kilos. If you're looking for pastrami, look for a piece that's between one and a half and two kilos in size and try and get the longer pieces if you can. It doesn't really matter, but the longer pieces are just a bit easier to handle and more pastrami sized, if that makes sense. So what you do is get your piece of beef, cut it into three pieces. So I've cut this six pieces here, so I am actually going to brine some and some I will show you what I'll do. Cut it into three pieces, as even as you could, and that's okay. Pop those over there. I've also made the brine ahead because it actually has to be cool. Obviously, you don't want to put um, fresh meat into boiling broth or brine because it will start to cook, and that's not what we want it to do. Now, you can see it's brown because I cheat and use brown sugar because I like the flavour of the brown sugar. So your brine is simply really easy to make. Two litres of water, about 200 grams of salt, um, 100 grams or so of, now you can use brown sugar, you can use white sugar or honey, as long as you've got some sort of sweetener in there. As I said, I prefer the brown sugar, but that's just me, you might just like honey. Go for it. And I do measure it out by weight. I get my trusty scales out and I measure out the 200 grams of salt, the 200 grams of sugar, and a couple of bay leaves and a couple of cloves of garlic. Now, I crush the garlic and put it in the broth. 
you can chop it, you can just slice them, cut them in half, whatever, and drop them in. Put that in a big pot, bring it to the boil, let it simmer for two or three minutes, turn it off and let it go cold. That's it. Easy as. Now, once it's cold, you get your pieces of corned beef. And I'm just I am gonna wear gloves tonight, folks, because it's a bit icky. You'll understand why in a minute. But just get your pieces of meat. Now, when you're trimming up your beef, don't be tempted to take the fat off. Leave the fat on it. Just pop it into the brine. There we go. Now, ah, it's, I measured it so it should not overflow. There we go. Just. Now, that needs to go in the fridge for five days. Yep, five days. Turn it every day, turn the meat every day, put the lid back on, pop it back in the fridge for five days. Okay. That seasons the meat, obviously, gives it a beautiful flavour with the, the bay leaf and the garlic going through it and the sugar and the um, salt to make the pickling brine going through it gives it a really nice flavour. It also helps to make it really, really tender because we're smoking this meat. It's it's not going to be um, cooked in the slow cooker on the stove. We're going to smoke it. And I'll explain about that in a second too. So, what's all that stuff floating on the top? Garlic. Oh, okay. That's the crushed garlic floating on the top. I missed that bit. Yeah, really pay attention, bay leaves. A couple of bay leaves, I've got three in there because they were only small. They're big ones, just pop two in. Two decent sized cloves of garlic, whole cloves. And as I said, I like to crush it. Um, the brown sugar, the salt, two litres of water. That's it. Now, I put this, I have a Tupperware, some sort of Tupperware container that's got a, it's a funny shape and it has a lid on it that is perfect for this sort of thing. It fits in the fridge nicely. So later on, I just wanted to put it in the glass bowl so you could see what I was doing. Later on, I'll transfer it to that container, put the lid on it, and every day for five days, I'll faithfully turn it, ready to use it. When you are ready, and I have to move this, excuse me, folks. When you are ready, I'm just going to spill it. There we go. Done. After the five days, it's nicely pickled, corned, flavoured, marinated, whatever you want to call it. You take it and take it out of the brine, pat it dry. I just use a clean dishcloth to pat it dry, clean dishcloth, and then put it aside because this is where you're going to make up your spice mix. Now, the spice mix is the easiest thing ever. Um, it's simply coriander seeds, black peppercorns, and whatever your favourite whole grain mustard is. This is um, just Aldi whole grain mustard, $1.79 a jar or thereabouts. Peppercorns I buy in bulk from... Hindustan imports, so I don't know, I can't recall how much they are a kilo, but they're fairly cheap. Now, this little packet of coriander seed I picked up at Coles today, it was about $1.59. So it's not overly expensive to make up the mix. Sorry, one thing, pickling spice, a tablespoon of pickling spice goes into your brine. Now, pickling spice is a combination of different spices that, this is in a pink jar and it is G Fresh brand. Um, I looked in Coles for pickling spice today and they didn't have it, but the lady told me they tend to have it as a seasonal thing, so more towards the end of summer when people are doing their veggie harvesting and preserving, they will have it in. I picked this up at the butcher to show you. There you go. But it, it's not overly expensive either. That was about $2. Now, if you make pickles, if you do sweet mustard pickles or zucchini pickles or anything like that, you'll probably already have pickling spice in your pantry. If not, you need, and I can tell you what's in it, because there's not much. Hmm. Oh, I can't, but it looks like there's coriander, some fennel, some mustard seed. I could probably tell you. Um, yep, 
please. Thank you. I don't think it says, does oh, it? Sorry. Yeah, so there's coriander, there's mustard seed, there's a little bit of fennel seed. Not really red. Um, that might be um, peppercorns, that sort of thing goes into pickling spice. Anywho, mm. to make the rub for your meat, you need black peppercorns, coriander seeds. So a whole packet of coriander seeds, which is about... 25 grams and about the same of black peppercorns. Now I whisk them because you want to make it into a powder. Can you see that? Yep, cool. Yep. I whisk them in the coffee grinder, my trusty coffee grinder. It gets used for all sorts of things. If you have a mortar and pestle like this one, and you can grind them down, roll them with a rolling pin, whatever, but you want to break them down so they're not any a complete powder but broken down is what you want and that's it then all we're going to do is open our jar of mustard that goes right there. Take, this, take a piece of meat and teaspoon and Slather the meat in the mustard. It's about a third of a jar because you're going to cover all sides of the meat with the mustard. Just like so. You can do it with these bits here too. Slather it on. You can see why I'm using a glove, can't you? Because it's really goopy. Now, as I said, we're gonna you need to smoke this. Now, if you don't have a smoker, that's not a problem because they're easy enough to make. If you have a barbecue with a, a cover on it, a hood on it, you can do it outside. Um, if you have an old electric fry pan, you can do it and you can use that as a smoker. They are readily available to fit barbecues from um, Bunnings, barbecues galore. Anaconda, places like that will have smokers um, that you can use. So if you don't actually have a smoking smoker unit, don't stress. Okay, that's that. Scoop up this group. Move that. And now comes the fun part. Spread that out. Get the meat and just roll it in the spices in the rub. That's all you have to do. More on the bench, you can't see. So there we go, spread it around. Just sort of like you are uh, almost like you're coating the breadcrumbs. They smell really good, don't they? The spices can. You need smeller, smeller vision. So that you can smell how good they are. Now make it thick. Don't be afraid to put the spices on so it's a nice thick coating because you want that flavour and it forms a really nice crust too because you're probably all familiar with the pastrami crust. There we go. One more piece. Check that out. Use your Press it on so it's nice and stuck. You don't want it to be lost. Now, this can go back in the fridge till you're ready to smoke it. Now, it will go back in the fridge here overnight. I'll smoke it in the morning because it takes a while. That's pretty much how you prepare your meat to make pastrami. Easy as that. Just a few simple ingredients. Five days in the brine, dry it off. Rub it in the spice mix. There it goes. Now, to get your smoker ready, they require wood chips. There are all different flavours of wood chips. There's apple and there's hickory and there's all sorts of weird things. 
I think we just use, we use either apple or hickory. Depends what's there when I go to buy them. They aren't very expensive and you only need a few, so the box lasts a long time. If you don't have a smoker like we have, we bought one about 10, 12 years ago, and we use it constantly during summer, mostly during summer, um, to do meats and things. But it's brilliant. It runs on gas. So it's next to the barbecue, the gas bottle does them both. It's really easy. But if you don't have that, don't despair. Like I said, if you have a barbecue with a hood, you can still use it as a smoker. If you don't have a barbecue with a hood, find an old electric fry pan um, and use that. I would perhaps choose an electric fry pan that was older that you would dedicate just to smoking if you want to do it all on a regular basis simply because the smoke gets into it so even if you scrub it it still has that smoky smell so all you need then is your fry pan um, a lid preferably a metal lid mm, all metal because it's going to heat up so uh, off a canning jar, something like that, an old fowler's lid if you've got those, or cut down um, a can, a tin can, a tuna can, or a salmon tin, or something like that. It doesn't have to be very deep, only, you know, and probably about the size of a peanut butter jar lid. Not terribly big, it doesn't have to be huge, and a cake rack. And what you'll do is do this outside. You won't be doing this in the house. This is an outside cooking um, experiment, deal, treat, whatever. Plug your fry pan in. Don't turn it on yet. Put your um, wood chips in the lid, in the metal lid or in the tin can. Now, you should have soaked those according to the instructions on the box. They vary slightly depending on which ones you get, but usually you just have to soak them for about half an hour, drain them, pop them in the lid. You put those in the centre of your fry pan, get a cake rack, pop it over the top, lay your pieces of meat across the rack, put the lid on if it's got a vent in it, close the vent because you don't want to lose the smoke, and turn it up to about 150 and leave it for about two hours. Don't lift the lid. If you lift the lid, you're going to let the smoke out and there goes your flavour. So you need to cook it for about two hours or until the um, meat reaches about 70 degrees Celsius, that is, 70 degrees Celsius. Um, I have a trusty meat thermometer that I just poke it in when it gets to 70. Now you do it over a low heat so you get that nice slow cooking. It might take a bit longer, it might take two and a half hours, it will depend on how thick the pieces of meat are. But usually around two hours is about 150, it's probably about enough. But check the temperature, you want to do it slow and you want to put it into the pan cold so that you don't lose the smoke. Now eventually the wood chips will stop smoking but by then, the smoke should have um, permeated the meat and flavoured it and started to preserve it. Once that's done, turn it off, bring it inside, put it on a baking dish, on a rack in a baking dish, and put uh, water in the baking dish until it's just coming up to the bottom of the rack. Cover it with foil. So it's nice and tight because you want to steam it now. Pop it into your oven that is on about 120. It's barely on your electric oven. It's barely on 120 and it's going to cook for three hours. Now you will have to check the water every now and then to make sure that it hasn't evaporated because you want to keep the water in the bottom so it keeps steaming. The um, condensation on the top of the foil will drip down onto your... Um, the top of your meat which will stop it from drying out because you don't want it to dry out it you want it to be nice and moist when it reaches 
two and a half to three hours, check the internal temperature again, and it should tell you on your meat thermometer. I'm pretty sure mine does. Excuse me. It tells me. Yeah, I use the one for ham, so it has to reach 160. Oh, that's Fahrenheit, so about 70 degrees. So it needs to keep that 70 degrees to be cooked, okay? But you want to do the slow cooking so that it's tender. Turn it off, turn the oven off, lift the foil off, put it onto a carving tray, let it cool a bit, and you can slice it now. It's delicious hot. It's really nice hot, but it's much nicer cold. So if you let it go cold, you can slice it. And the beauty is when it's cold, you can slice it really, really thinly. I use my electric knife to do it, really thin slices, almost shaved. Um, and it's just delicious. So you can have it like that with salad. You can have it on sandwiches. You can um, turn it into a Reuben sandwich with um, sauerkraut and um, pastrami on a nice rye bread little bit of mustard drizzled over the top, mustard sauce over the top, very nice. Um, that's it, that's pretty much it. Now that's an awful lot of pastrami because it doesn't shrink a lot, not a lot of shrinking. So you will get probably most of that um, as finished off pastrami. So it will freeze. So you can parcel it into serving sizes and freeze it if you want to. I like to slice it, parcel it in about 100 gram lots, wrap it up, um, sip, uh, vacuum seal it, pop it in the freezer, and it keeps for months like that. And then I can have pastrami all year round without breaking the budget. It works out to less than half the price. Now, this was... Um, 1.8 kilos wasn't quite two kilos this piece and it was uh, $17 something it was $9.99 a kilo so straight away it's under half price per kilo then the bought stuff anyway adding in the cost of the spices for the brine and the um, coating it works out to about another three dollars so it'd be about thirteen dollars oh no dollar fifty because that was for two kilos so yeah eleven dollars fifty a kilo that's it done when you're looking at between 24 and 35 or 25 and 34 dollars a kilo it's a huge difference it's less than half price per kilo less than half the price per kilo to make your own pastrami and it, that's how simple it is. And like I said, you won't see the finished product tonight. I will show you some on Tuesday. But it's so easy. Absolutely so easy. And you don't need anything fancy to do it. An electric fry pan, a barbecue, you don't have a smoker. You'll get your wood chips from, yeah, like I said, Bunnings or... Home hardware, most hardware stores, anywhere that sells a barbecue should sell the wood chips for smoking. Really easy, simple as that, really cheap. And perhaps if you haven't got a Father's Day gift yet, maybe a smoking, smoking box for the barbecue from the camping shop. They run to about $20, I think, $15 to $20 for a smoking box from the, bar, from the camping shop. And that just fits onto your barbecue. Nothing expensive. Now, I don't just do pastrami. I also do chicken, which is why we bought the smoker in the first place, because I was no longer able to buy smoked chicken at the deli. They stopped selling it. Smoked chicken is so easy to do, but that's for another video, obviously. Really quick. Yes. What kind of beef is it? Corned beef. It's just simple corned beef from the butcher. What you'd buy to have with your cabbage and mash, corned beef and cabbage, that's it. It's just corned beef. Now, as I said, technically, because it has already been brined, you don't need to do the brining again. But trust me when I say you will want to. 
because it is so much nicer if you just take the time to brine it, let it sit for the five days and then, then do the cooking. Can you explain what corned beef is for Claire? Silverside? Oh, corned beef is silverside, yeah. It's a cut of beef and it's already been pickled. It's nice. Um, it is nice. nice with the so you cheese. buy it and they call it corned. Corned is just an old-fashioned word for pickled or pickling. So can you hear a beeping? It's just a pager. Oh, it's the pager. Okay. Don't worry about the beeping, folks. Um, corned is an old-fashioned term for pickling. So it's just pickled beef pretty much. Um, they do whatever they add to it to make it red. I think it might have been. It used to be sulphur, I think, they added to it. I don't think they add sulphur to it anymore. But, yeah, that's what it is. It's just a cut of beef that has been pickled. And usually you buy it from, if you buy it from the supermarket, it comes um, cryovac. Um, if it's cryovac, you'll probably check the years by and it ha will have weeks on it, anything from four to six weeks. Um, it will keep. Now, it freezes, so you can put it in the freezer like that and then thaw it out and cook it later if you want to, yeah. Um, how do you check the temperature without letting the smoke out? Okay. Well, you don't check the temperature until it's been on for about two hours. By then, the smoke will have gone. Um, the wood chips will have finished their smoking. That usually lasts anywhere between 50 minutes to an hour. So the last hour is just the, the cooking and the heat. So you can check the temperature then. But Trust me when I say you don't want to lift the lid before the two hours is up because you'll just lose your flavour and that defeats the whole purpose. Hmm. Um, is suicide sold both corned and not? Uh, sometimes. Usually it's corned. Usually you get it corned. You can buy a piece from the butcher that is just, just the roasting piece of roasting meat and that I think they call uh, forgotten the name of it but it's not silver side or corned beef is generally means that it has been pickled or corned if it hasn't been it's called something else and you can buy it now I will tell you that if you do have silver side you can brisket. roast it brisket's a different cut again and again it's often already corned, but it's not necessarily. Um, you can roast corned beef. Rinse it really well and just bake it like you would a piece of ordinary roasting beef. It um, has an interesting, um, if you don't rinse it really well, it might be too salty, um, which will be the salt in the brine coming out, and you lose that when it's um, cooked in water like we normally do corned beef, yeah. So, right, that's it. How easy is that? Simple as, very inexpensive way to get pastrami, which is a really, really nice deli meat. It's a really good way to stretch the budget. If you like deli meat, do your own corned beef. If you like deli meat, just buy a piece of corned beef, cook it up, cut it when it's cold. When it's cold, it cuts so much better than when it's warm. And it's easy to go. So that's it. That's how to make pastrami. I will show you on Tuesday night what it looks like cooked because I'm not racing outside in the dark and the cold to do the smoking now. But I'll be happy to show you on Tuesday night what it looks like cooked. And I'll even taste test it for you and let you know how it tastes. All right. So thank you so much for joining me. I hope that um, this helps. If you go to our website, go to the Cheapskates Club website and type in Moo Pastrami, the um, recipe and the instructions will come up for you. So put it in the search at the top left of the screen. And that's how easy it is, really. Simple as, totally simple. Uh, if you haven't already subscribed, please do to our channel. Please do. We would love more subscribers. We've got 1,410. Thank you, everyone. 
really, really excited about that. Imagine how excited I'll be when we're at 1500. I'll do a happy dance for you. Um, if you'd like the video, please give us a thumbs up. If you have any questions, um, put them in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer them for you. Otherwise, I shall see you on Tuesday. Have a lovely weekend, everyone. And we're, I'd say stay warm, but we're going to be 18 and 19 this weekend, so I'm looking forward to it. We're not. They've changed it. Raining Sunday. Oh, never mind. And if you are celebrating Father's Day on Sunday, hope you all have a lovely day. I'll see you on Tuesday. Thank you so much again for joining me. Well done. Click it. Click the mouse. There we go. She lost the mouse.